I'm Brian Westbrook with GeekWire Studios here at AWS reInvent. Very excited to chat with our friends at Accenture and Lion. We've got some great stuff and some great technology. I want to bring on my guests, Luke Higgins and Yogesh Sharma. And you're with Lion. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do and what you bring to the table? Yes, yeah, so I'm the analytics platform owner at Lion. Um, I'm, I help business with all their solution needs in, in the domain of data reporting, analytics, and dashboarding kind of area and provide them support from the technology standpoint of view. And Lion is an alcoholic beverage company that operates in Australia. We were joking, and New Zealand, we were joking a little bit ago about how there's some fun beverages, and there's certainly a, a, a fun side to the beverage industry, but there's also a very serious side of the beverage industry. Luke Higgins with Accenture, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you bring to the partnership. Yeah, I look after all of Accenture's core global automation, um, and particularly in growth markets, where we build out our core assets that enable our managed service teams, as well as our, our large program teams to be able to deliver our services, infusing automation into the way that we do it. And, and we do that by building new assets that allow us to really complement the way that the teams uh, operate and augment them in a way that really improves their productivity and the quality of all services we deliver. I know many of those that are watching this video are familiar with Accenture and are familiar with the products that you bring to the table, maybe customers or potential customers. But I want to talk specifically about something that I know of as my wizard, and it has a new name yeah. for about a year ago. Yeah. Tell us about Gen Wizard. Okay, so my wizard is essentially our core platform for automation, where essentially it is made up of many different assets that we build out in modular ways and deploy where necessary to to, to provide that level of productivity, like I explained. Gen Wizard is the evolution of my wizard, which includes the generative components um, within those core assets and between those core assets. It allows us to really become the glue between the assets to improve the intelligence and the decision making around you know, what happens within the automation. What would be an example of that automation that, paint a picture for us, if you will, where Gen Wizard would really help streamline, optimize, reduce cost. Yeah, sure. So actually, I think probably, you know, Yogesh and, and I probably can share giving that example. Uh, so at Lion, um, initially when we were, we were working with the teams, we had a service desk um, that would be supporting out of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. um, they would receive calls, particularly major priority calls, when there'd be issues in the, in the brewery, um, problems on the Something's production line. Something's gone down or... Yeah. The, label, the label optimist. maker, okay, the, right. the production <laughs> line, the la it stops. Um, yeah. and, and Essentially, in that scenario, we'd have the team ring up, talk to our service desk team. It may take 15 minutes as they try and navigate exactly yeah. what's going on. Uh, and then from there, it would pass off you know, into essentially a large bridge. Um, and that bridge would bring together teams from all parts of life. Mm -hmm. uh, and essentially, they would then work the problem uh, to try and solve it. And that may take a couple of hours, depending on how complex it is, two or three hours. At, and with GenWizard, what we did was we infused the generative capabilities in to the point where it actually started to receive the calls. And I'll, I might pass it to Yogesh to sort of elaborate from there, but fundamentally, instead of people having to take the calls uh, and engage you know, with what was going on that would take, as I said, 15 minutes, mm -hmm. um, it, it's, now, it's now taking a fraction of the time. So you've built a platform that helps automate this process. What happens next? Yogesh, take it from here. So um, it's, it's really exciting to see how this solution really works. Um, it has reduced our uh, ticket creation system by 46% um, in, in terms of times. So uh, the Gen AI takes the call from the end user. It enriches the ticket with all the information or the background or the potential root cause analysis information in there. We have provided around two to three years worth of data yeah. in the Gen, Gen AI yeah. data repository based on which it yeah. predicts the potential solutions. So that's that's a huge addition to the outcome uh, that business needs. So, so essentially now, rather than taking you know 15 minutes together to understand what was going on, right. then we form this large bridge where we bring everybody because we don't exactly know who should be helping right. solve the problem. Then two two couple of hours, two to three hours later, find the problem. Now the generative AI takes the call, immediately within one to two minutes understands exactly what's going on, it goes out to the generative AI as two to three years of knowledge has been put into our generative AI store now within GenWizard. And that's made up of sort of 5,000 different, what we call micro knowledge base articles that then provides us a guidance as to how do I solve these different types of problems? What the design of the system looks like? You know, how should it then do the RCA? It assembles the answer based on the information that's been assembled from the call within 30, 40 seconds. Uh, and then immediately while 
we're lodging the ticket, it's immediately then doing the root cause analysis, and then it's linking to the automation to do the triage or potentially the resolution of the problem, and it's deciding who should be brought onto the bridge. Right. So rather than having everybody, you have like a 5% of the team, right. the right team being brought onto the bridge, um, with that information being passed to them around the root cause and potentially the automated triage that's gone on at the same time. So rather than taking multiple hours to solve the problem, we're, we're talking minutes and we've got an idea of exactly what the potential issue is and potentially the solution in place. Uh, so that, that's the difference. So. That's incredible, I especially like the large bridge because yeah. we've all been on those calls. We've all been on call 24 yeah. hours a day. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I have no I, idea what's I, I, going I on. My mother-in-law got invited to that. <laughs> right. I, 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 that's how big the bridges are. It's one know, of those CC that. all, like yeah. just yeah. not everyone. Yeah. And, yeah. and everyone gets yeah. invited to that. We joke, yeah. but that's yeah. a serious problem because yeah. that's taking me or someone yeah. that's maybe not related yeah. to solving the problem. Exactly. You guys, I want to ask you, what was the moment? There was, I, I know there was one example. I'm going to throw you off card here a little bit where you were using the Gen Wizard platform and you said, wow, this was the right decision. And maybe you were at the beach, you were relaxing, and it solved the problem much quicker that would have maybe taken you back into the office or would have been more complicated. What was that one example where you're like, oh, this was the right move? So I think, especially with this particular use case uh, where the Jenna is taking on the calls from the mm -hmm. customer, we just went live in the last six weeks. And when Luke just showed me um, the, the call script that the end user was talking okay. to, it was pretty um, difficult to understand exactly the from the keywords, but the way the whole Genai solution kind of made the transcript out of it and completely really summarized it, completely summarized it yeah. in the dot bullet points, and yeah. it's just just by looking at it, you can't just make out what the customer actually said and really? what the narrative is supposed mm -hmm. to be. And after doing all the research based on the data backside, I think that yeah. it was just a casual yeah. chat. But when yeah. I saw that script, it just like blew my mind yeah. off. You, you, you can't believe, like, yeah. the, 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 like, and that's the real difference between when you incorporate the generative intelligence and yeah. what the traditional way was before. You'd be trying to decompose exactly what the users are asking for. And especially like with user-based tickets, you know, there's so much context that the user obviously has, doesn't always write down. Yeah. Um, and fundamentally, the generative AI has that context because you've given it to it. You've yeah. formed the context of the system definition. And it includes that with its analysis when it summarizes what's going on. So fundamentally, it, the user don't have to provide as much context. They just need to explain the situation right. and the rest of it can be derived because we understand what is the user's role, you know, and the generative AI has that intelligence, what's going on in the system at the, this point in time, and exactly what is the likely, you know, I guess, area of problem that the customer's probably talking about. And it's using that context along with the large language models to then work out fundamentally what the likely issue of an area of problem is. We've all seen help desk environments and tickets, whether they be technical or manufacturing optimization or a supply chain. And there's kind of that human element of, oh, I know this mm -hmm. and, and kind of the, the nuances of it. Has there ever been an instance, whether whether it be with Lion or otherwise, where Gen Wizard has just gotten it wrong? Oh yeah. So, well, when we first went live, and this is a, you have, sometimes you got to fail fast, but but you, and you only really know when some of the tech goes into the wild, like exactly yeah, you know, course, how it's right. going to yeah, respond. Yeah. And uh, one of the calls that we were getting in, the gentleman who rang up um, was obviously, uh, I think, it must have been on shift and wasn't right in in, in the particular brewery at the time. And his son was by, by was behind him and must have been going to a movie theater. Okay. And you could hear the son talking about oh, right. he wanted, you know, chocolate, you know, and right. uh, and also these background voices that were, were going on. Uh, and that, you know, he was very upset that he didn't get the chocolate. And uh, <laughs> and that generally I heard that and right. started to try and incorporate that and understood the sentiment of the son okay. in conjunction with, you know, what the particular issue was that was being reported. And uh, in that in that context, it actually blended the two. Uh, and, it, and inside the ticket description, it was something about, you know, they couldn't unload um, for some issue <laughs> because, uh, you know, there was an issue, you know, getting the chocolate. So, <laughs> so, 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 uh, so, so that, that sort of, um, yeah, so we did learn that, uh, yeah, you have to give a bit of more context when, you know, obviously the generator you know, is like understanding what the problem is so that right. the, the user right. realizes, you know, if, if you're, you know, your son wants chocolate. Just, just look. Let, just wait for a second while you explain to the generative AI what you need, <laughs> <laughs> and then you can have that that discussion. Yeah. So, are there any chocolate beverages being being crafted as a result of this, or do we put that in the idea bucket for later? Maybe right? idea bucket yeah. for later. That, that's fantastic. Yeah. Great example, but it it is interesting to think about 
the nuances and the yeah. background noise yeah. is a little bit of it here as well. Yeah wanting to focus on yeah. exactly what you're talking about and then yeah. it picked up that translate yeah. and said oh yeah. i need to process yeah. that yeah. Yeah. whereas yeah. whereas a human yeah. may have been able to say yeah. that wasn't yeah. for me yeah yeah exactly or that might have been able to ask yeah. like do you yeah. is there a problem with the chocolate <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. 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 if there's a problem with chocolate yeah. we all have problems right yeah. i want to get to the five key focus areas of gen wizard and and how will this be game changers in the enterprise look, look this technology in my 19 years has been the most exciting um and I think the reasons for that are because every time you start using it in different use cases, it somehow surprises you with what it can actually do. And the five key areas, first of all, I think it's about establishing the, the living knowledge base. Mm -hmm. uh, because fundamentally, generative AI only um, really knows what you, you tell it, besides what obviously it has in the general knowledge store. So you've got to put the enterprise context, and we, we put that uh, essentially next to the LLM in its respective right. generative AI data store. Uh, and once it understands like that example we were giving with the tickets of like the previously resolved tickets, um, the design of the system, all this information, the generator can use that information in conjunction with the LLM to make sense of it. The second is uh, on the journey is being how you introduce that generative AI capability to really hyper automate the systems. How do you hyper automate how you enable the resolution of the tickets through to how do you automate the building of systems and enablement of that, the building of systems. Uh, and I, I think the secondary area really opens up, you know, a huge new set of opportunities, which is the third area, which is starting to look at how do we enable the move from technical debt, you know, to technical dividend. And so in that sense, what we're doing is we're saying, how do we reimagine the systems? How do we reverse engineer and forward engineer the systems using the generative AI to be able to essentially accelerate and reinvent the business? Mm -hmm. uh, because the beauty of the systems now at generative AI is it can literally read the code, understand it, and then reverse engine, you can then ask it to reverse engineer it. And then you forward engineer into a new system, new technology platform, and essentially you're modernizing those core systems at the same time, uh, which then reduces your operational costs. At the same time, you start building future ready systems. That is a fantastic journey, and I love the conversation. Of course, I like talking about beer, so that's <laughs> fine. It's, certainly, you had me at that. But it's interesting to watch how Gen Wizard is making what was a complicated troubleshooting process simple, easier, and more effective, yeah. and certainly taking up a lot less time. You guys, any closing thoughts? From the key takeaways point of view, um, obviously, it's it's still in a very early stages, and even being in a very early stages, we are able to achieve a lot of um, enhancements in our processes. We are able to reduce the turnaround time by 25%. Uh, we have uh, the system availability is a lot uh, greater than compared to what it used to be. And to be honest, um, these kind of solutions is uh, really enabling line to achieve the strategic goal of keeping the customers at heart. So really, uh, it's fantastic. Awesome. You guys, Luke, yeah. we've got to leave it there. Thank you so much. I'm Brian Westbrook, GeekWire Studios. Thanks for watching.